Downgrading the firmware on a JK VMS should be a fairly simple task, but only if you have the force update password or code. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. But before we get going with that, uh, there are a couple of other videos that I've made testing the functions and the limits of this JK VMS with a SunSync converter. And there were some interesting results. So I will leave links to those videos in the description if you guys are interested. Now I'm gonna assume because you're trying to downgrade the firmware on your JK VMS that you are already familiar with or you are somewhat familiar with the upgrade process and using the software. But in summary, you're going to need a PC running Windows. You're also gonna need the JK monitoring software and a firmware update file. Now both of those you can download from the JK website or you can just head over to Andy's website at the Offgrid Garage and get all the files and the software from there. And you're also going to need a USB to RS-485 adapter and a cable. Now if you're not 100% sure, not to worry because in a previous video I showed exactly where to get all the software, also how to make the RS-485 adapter cable and how to upgrade the firmware. So uh, if you guys need, just pause the this video and go and head over to that video, check out the process quickly and then come back here and carry on. So you can start off by making sure the address is set on the dip switches on the BMS interface board and address number one should work just fine. Now you can go ahead and plug in your RS-485 adapter and just keep this in mind if this is the first time you're using the adapter you may need to wait for Windows to recognize and install the drivers before the COM port will be available. You'll also want to plug the other end of the Ethernet cable into the RS-485 parallel port on your BMS and also make sure that none of the other communication or the parallel cables are plugged in. Next is to open up the BMS monitoring software and then select the device ID which corresponds to the address that you've just set on the dip switches on the BMS. And remember, if you aren't sure what the address is, you can find this by looking at the BMS app, going into settings, and then scrolling down to device address. You'll also need to select the COM port of your RS-485 adapter, and in my case, it's COM port number three, and then click connect. And after a few seconds, the BMS's real-time information should show up. Now, if we go to the About tab, we can see the firmware version 15.17 is installed. So at the top right corner, click the button with the three dots and then select Upload Fireware. Then go ahead and click on the three dots on the Upload Fireware pop-up window and select the firmware file that you've just downloaded. Now, as a side note, you can see that there are two files here. The bottom one is a firmware version 15.17, which is currently on the BMS, but I want to downgrade that back to 15.11 which is the top file. Also please remember you need to download the firmware version that is specific to your hardware version so either hardware version 14 or 15 at the moment and your specific model of BMS. So in my case it is PB1A16S15P. So we can select that firmware version that you want and now you can see that there is a warning saying a minor version must be larger than connected device. Not to worry though, this is just a warning that you are trying to load a version of firmware that is older than the current firmware that is on your BMS. So click the force update button and here is where you need to enter the temporary reset password. At the moment, this password is an eight digit code and it changes or resets every hour. And there are three different places you can get it from. Well, I say three different places, it's actually three different methods and they, they all take you to the same place. Now, all credit needs to go to Miro for creating this code or password generator. So Miro, I don't know who you are, but really thank you very much for that. And also a huge thank you to Andy from the Off-Grid Garage, which is where I've learned all of this stuff. So guys, please go and show them some support. So you can go directly to the code generator on Miro's GitHub page by using the link in the description. I'll also leave that link at the top of the comment section or you can go to the JK BMS website, that's jkbms.net, head over to technical support and then click firmware temporary password. And that also takes you to Miro's GitHub page. Or you can go to Andy's website at the Off Grid Garage and then click on BMS and Balancer and then scroll down the page and click the JK BMS code generator link and that will also take you through to Miro's GitHub page. Either way, whichever method you choose, you're always going to end up at Miro's GitHub page. Or at least that's the case for now. If things change in the future, I'm not too sure how quickly JK would update their website, but I'm pretty sure Andy from the Off-Grid Garage keeps his stuff up to date. I'll also try and keep my links in the description and the comment section updated. So you can take note of this code and then jump back over to the JK BMS software and then enter the code and then click OK. And now the update process should begin 
And once the update is complete, you should see an upload FireWare successfully message pop up. And once that's complete, you should be able to confirm the new firmware version by updating the About tab. And then the Upload Software version will be shown here. And in this case, it's been downgraded to 15.11. I also think it's good practice to connect to the BMS and run through all of the settings and check that everything is correct after the firmware update. And once everything is plugged in, check that your communication and all of the functions are working correctly with your inverter. So as you can see, the process went pretty smoothly for me. And thank you guys very much for everybody that has commented in the previous videos. And from reading those comments, it still seems like some people do experience some problems. Now, if that is the case, please let us know what those problems are in the comments. And then hopefully somebody else that is watching the video or reading the comments has a solution and they can share that solution with all of us so that we can all learn. And all of that said, if you want to know more about the problem I came across with the latest firmware version on these JK BMSs, go check out this video right here. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you found the video useful, please give it a thumbs up and well, <laughs> I guess I'll see you in that video. Cheers.